Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news update. Yes, another one. Can't believe we're doing another update already, but the news just keeps flowing. For whatever reason, September just seems to be the month of news in regards to new exploits for the PS4 and PS5. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So the big news here is that yesterday, FreeBSD issued an urgent security advisory for a new CVE 2024-43102. So this comes to us from securityonline.info, which states here that the FreeBSD project has issued a security advisory warning of a critical vulnerability affecting multiple versions of its operating system. This flaw rated with a maximum CVSS score of 10 could allow malicious actor to trigger a kernel panic or execute arbitrary code, potentially leading to a complete system compromise. So it says down here the versions of FreeBSD that are vulnerable down to 13.3, Although I've seen elsewhere that it supposedly includes older versions like 13.0 and perhaps even older versions like the PS5, which runs on FreeBSD 11. That is why this is significant. Any new exploit in FreeBSD has the potential to affect the PS5 and the PS4 since they are running FreeBSD kernels. Although, of course, Sony do make a lot of modifications to those. They're not exactly stock FreeBSD kernels, but still any vulnerability that comes out for FreeBSD has a high likelihood of also affecting the PS4 and PS5. And I believe the PS4 runs FreeBSD 9, an even older version. So whether this will affect the PS4 still kind of remains to be seen at this point, uh, because it is a much older version of FreeBSD, and it does seem to suggest that this is mainly targeting newer versions of FreeBSD that are the issues here. Um, it doesn't even include FreeBSD 11, so you would think that the PS5 might not be vulnerable to this, but that's not what's being reported. What's being reported is that the PS5 is indeed vulnerable to this. So this comes to us from Zeko, of course, over on Twitter. So he was the one who linked to this original article, and he says it's the same bug that his friend used. He also stated that his friend said that this should also work on 1.xx and 2.xx, as well as up to some of the most recent firmwares. So this could be a huge deal for PS5 jailbreaking for a number of different reasons. You know, since this is a urgent security advisory released by FreeBSD, suggests that they did not know about it beforehand. They've only just realized that this is an issue now, which is which means there's a good chance that Sony didn't know about this either. And therefore, the latest firmwares could be vulnerable to this exploit. It is a kernel exploit. Uh, another good thing about this is supposedly it is an easier kernel exploit to trigger. According to Zeko, he does say it should be easier because it's a use after free. So it could mean that it might not be long before we start seeing an implementation of this. It will need to be probably chained with a user land exploit, uh, which would be either the Blu-ray drive exploit on the PS5, you know, the BD jailbreak, uh, which works up to uh, 7.60, I think, um, or maybe a new WebKit exploit. And Zeko has also posted some information about a another WebKit vulnerability that could also affect uh, the PS4 and PS5 that could potentially be used with this. He's asking people to test it out at the moment on various different firmwares. So this is all building up to what could be a new exploit, a new kernel exploit for the PS5. So there's two big benefits to this at the moment, one for higher firmwares and one for older firmwares, because for higher firmwares, we could obviously see a new jailbreak similar to what we have on 3.x and 4.x on a more modern up-to-date firmware like 8 point something, 7 point something, maybe even 9 point something um, if we're lucky and it's not already been reported to Sony. There's always a chance it could have been reported via the HackerOne bug bounty program a while ago since there are certain hackers in the scene like uh, Zeko's friend here that he's talking about who have known about this for some time. So it could have been reported to Sony through their HackerOne bug bounty program a while ago and it may already be patched in the PS5 and uh, PS4 if the PS4 is vulnerable, uh, in which case it will be an it will not be the latest firmwares like 9.x and 8.x. It might be 7. Point something that might be vulnerable, but that would still be much higher than you know 4.51. So that would be a huge benefit, especially if we can get some kind of lib hijacker equivalent uh, like we have on 3.x and 4.x to give us um, you know a similar kind of jailbreak functionality without kernel patches. So that is something that we could hopefully look forward to with this new um, kernel exploit. But even on older firmwares, this has a benefit because people on 1.x firmwares and 2.x firmwares, I know there's not many of them around, but we haven't had a kernel exploit publicly for those firmwares at the moment. And we know that Flats 
has a hypervisor exploit on those firmwares because they changed the way the hypervisor is implemented from the 2.x firmwares up to 3.x. So therefore, I don't, we're not sure if his hypervisor exploit works on those higher firmwares, but we know it works on the 1.x and 2.x firmwares. And if we have a kernel exploit, a public kernel exploit um, on those older firmwares, then perhaps Flats might be more likely to release that hypervisor exploit so we can get a full jailbreak on those older firmwares. Um, or maybe it will help some of the other uh, exploit devs look into exploiting the hypervisor themselves now that they have a kernel exploit for those older firmwares. It could help with the research in getting a hypervisor exploit on those older firmwares. But of course, it's the higher firmwares that I'm more interested in because it will make uh, jailbreaking the PS5 more accessible than it is now because right now we need a console that hasn't been updated in two and a half years and that is just getting more and more difficult as time goes on so it'll definitely help to have a new kernel exploit a new jailbreak essentially on a higher firmware providing we can get some kind of similar lib hijacker running on those higher firmwares too so that is pretty much where we are with that and again there is a possibility it could also affect uh, the PlayStation 4. Looking at the actual firmware versions, there hasn't been a security update on the PS5 since 8.40, which included the fixes to the PP Pwn exploit. And there hasn't really been any sort of security updates since then. So there is still a chance that Sony may not have been made aware of this yet, in which case it could actually work all the way up to the latest firmware since it doesn't look like they've you know implemented any new security updates since 8.40. However, you know, given the fact that, um, you know, Zeko's friend has known about this for a long time and there may be others in the scene who have known about this for a long time who have maybe possibly reported it to Sony beforehand, then this may have been patched already. So that is really the big question mark at the moment is what firmware is this going to work up to? Either way, it should be higher than 4.51, but we just don't know if it's going to go all the way to 9.60 or if it's going to be quite a bit lower, maybe a 7 point something firmware or 8 point something firmware, that is the question as it stands right now. So again, we don't really have a lot of information on this at the moment, but the good news is that since this has been made public now, it means all other hackers in the scene are able to try and you know work with this kernel exploit and try and turn it into an exploit for the PS5. It's not just you know the person Zeko knows anymore who has access to this or is working on this, you know, now lots of other uh, exploit devs in the scene can try and implement this themselves. Maybe the flow will try it. Maybe, uh, you know, Spectre or Slayer's Govi. So yeah, this could be a major step forward. So the next steps are, of course, figuring out if the PS4 is vulnerable, figuring out uh, what firmwares on the PS4 or PS5 um, this works up into. So where, when was it patched or has it been patched yet? We don't know. And then secondly, this WebKit exploit that Zeko has posted, seeing if it's actually viable on PS5 to be chained with this kernel exploit to create a full exploit chain to give us a jailbreak on the PS5 and possibly PS4. So yeah, lots of uh, exciting news going on at the moment here in the PS4 and PS5 scene. So once we have that information, I will bring it to you guys. But in the meantime, of course, we also got the uh, announcement of the PS5 Pro. Uh, which a lot of people are unhappy about because the price just seems a little a little bit steep, shall we say. So 700 US dollars uh, and then of course it's 700 pounds in the UK, which equates to about 900 US dollars, which is crazy. And then I think it's 800 euros as well. So pretty damn expensive and it doesn't come with a stand or a disk drive, which means if you're wanting to use it for jailbreaking, it's got the same problem that the Slim has where you would have to buy it and then you'd have to update it to whatever the latest firmware is at the time so that you could activate the disk drive uh, if you were wanting to be able to use the disk drive and then you'd have to keep it on that firmware until a jailbreak comes out and obviously this new exploit even if it works up to 9.60 will not apply to PS5 Pro because if it's not already been patched it will be by the time the PS5 Pro launches. So yeah if you needed another reason not to buy a PS5 Pro uh, yeah, it's likely not going to get a jailbreak for a very long time. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.